Okay, we'll continue with the post-game press conference for the 2019 All-State Sugar Bowl. We have uh, Texas head coach Tom Herman, defensive end Charles Omenahu, and we will be joined in a few minutes by quarterback Sam Ellinger. Uh, after a brief opening statement, here he comes right now. After a brief opening statement from coach, we'll open the floor to uh, questions for coach and the players. We'll let uh, Sam get seated and then you can take it away. Um, really proud of our team. You know, I know that the phrase uh, team win gets used quite a bit, but um, the way our offense, defense, and special teams complemented each other uh, the entire night uh, I, I thought was, was magnificent. It was what we needed to have happen in order to have a chance to win. Um, I have an unbelievable amount of respect for Kirby Smart and, and his crew and his program, uh, so much so that uh, we took a trip out there this spring uh, just to, to pick brains and, and you know, talk shop a little bit. And um, that's a really, really good football team uh, that he has there and, and one that I'm sure uh, he will continue to field uh, throughout uh, his tenure at Georgia. So uh, our hats off to them. That was a, a heck of a football game. Uh, but uh, again, just really proud of the physical nature in which we played this game. Uh, at, at this point in our program's uh, trajectory, um, that's, what, that's what we're going to need to do to win is we've got to out-hustle people, we've got to out-hit people, uh, and um, you know, we, we've got to uh, play with a, a purpose and a passion uh, greater than anybody in the country. And um, tonight I feel like we did that. We'll open the floor up for uh, questions for coach or the players. And uh, as always, raise your hand. We'll bring a mic to you. Identify yourself by name and media outlet. We'll start right over here. For players or can we? Either one. OK, uh, Brian Davis, Austin American Statesman. Uh, Tom, I've asked you, I asked you this in the spring, in August, in September. And I want to ask it again. At the biggest moment of the season, first and goal at the one, your guys finally lined up and slammed it in there to, to take the lead with, with this guy. What did it say about your team's toughness at that moment and this entire night about how tough Texas is now? Um, yeah, I, I appreciate you noticing that. Um, that. That we've developed, you know, that we have continued to develop. I'm not sure, we, uh, no, I am sure we wouldn't have been able to do that week one or week two, uh, but we did it tonight against um, an unbelievable defense and, um, you know, we, we were going to have to do that. I mean, it, we, when you get down there, uh, you got to be able to punch the ball in. And um, I, I think uh, it it certainly provided us um, a validation of our confidence heading into the game that um, you know that that we could we could do that. We'll move over here to the right side. So far away. Justin Wells, Inside Texas, Coach Herman. Noticed uh, that you really focused on the run game because, and, and, and with Georgia being a, a, an incredible run defense, that seemed like to be the MO of the night. And you switched around the, the offensive linemen kind of <laughs> sneakily. We saw, you know, Calvin Anderson slide inside, Patrick Vahe pop to the left side, Cosme slide inside a couple times. Was that part of, of your game plan to try to throw off Georgia a little bit? Uh, I, it wasn't necessarily to throw off Georgia, it was um, to get the right people doing the right things um, on a certain play that. Actually, we had to check out of it all three times <laughs> that, uh, uh, that we had called the play. So uh, we wanted to make sure uh, our game plan was uh, two things. One, we wanted to run our plays, but run them out of uh, different formations and motions. Uh, you saw us in pistol quite a bit. Uh, you saw us motion in the back, into the backfield. You saw us motion the tight end, uh, in and out. You saw us motion some receivers. Uh, just you know, when you've got a month to prepare, as good as that defensive staff is, uh, if, if, you, if you let them diagnose uh, exactly, you know, what's going on, they're, they're pretty dang good. And so we wanted to disguise uh, a lot of, you know, again, our, our, our base plays 
Uh, and then we wanted to play with tempo. Uh, we, we felt like uh, we could wear them out a little bit. They, they like to play a lot of guys on defense in that front seven. Uh, and we, we wanted to make sure that we could keep them on the field. And uh, I thought we, we executed that plan, those two parts of the plan, uh, pretty well. I believe the microphone is over on the left-hand side. Trent Dashner, Dallas Morning News. Tom, you've talked a lot about how much the senior class is meant and how this might be the most important senior class that you might have in your Texas career. Um, after having won the Sugar Bowl now, can you put in perspective just the impact that they've had and then capping their careers off this way? Yeah, I, I mean, anytime I'm asked about them, I'll, I'm, I'm going to thank them publicly. I, I, we would not be here uh, if it was not for their buy-in two years ago. I told the senior class, even in the locker room, uh, you know, despite a, an up and down year last year, they never wavered in their buy-in and their commitment. Uh, despite, uh, you know, us laying an egg in the first game, you know, that, that could have been a time when a less bought-in group, um, a less mature group uh, would have, you know, rats jumping ship, if you will. And uh, they didn't, it brought them closer. It brought them more together. And um, they were the heart and soul uh, of this season. And, um, you know, they are a huge part uh, of, or a huge reason why uh, our trajectory is headed the way that it's headed. Move over to the right side towards the back. Uh, Ricky Doyle, Spectrum News, Austin. Sam, I'm wondering if you can tell us uh, how the Drew Brees Westlake jersey came to be for tonight, and then also just overall what this this night and this win meant for you and for the program. Yeah, I think uh, coming into Superdome, I had to respect Drew because of um, all the amazing things he's done in this building, and I, I honestly wanted to play like him, um, have a little have a little magic. But um, that was just paying my respect to him. And then, I mean, this win is it's a huge stepping stone for our program. Um, it's going to carry a lot of momentum into the off season, and I look forward to getting back in January. Back over on the left side, front row. Uh, Cedric Golden, Austin American Statesman. Sam, piggybacking on uh, Ricky's question, um, uh, do you have a relationship with uh, Drew, and, and how cool was it to come in here and, and produce that magic that he's produced so many times in this same building? Yeah, we've connected a few times. Um, he's always been incredible to me, reaching out, um, always letting letting me know that he's there if he, if I need him. Um, he obviously is a tremendous role model because of what he's done um, in the NFL, um, and uh, I, I thank him for that. On the right side, front row. Uh, Alma Richards, Orange Bloods, hey, Coach. Uh, did your heart drop when Sam yelled that uh, you guys are back as far as Texas is concerned? And if yes. <laughs> then can you, from your perspective, just put into now that the season's over, you don't have another opponent, uh, what does this win mean? And is Texas back? I'll, I'll never know what that means, is Texas back. So I'm never going to comment on that. Um, it can mean a lot of different things. Um, and so I, I, I'll never comment on, on that. I know we're headed in the right direction. Um, I, you know, I, I don't ever want to give any kind of finality to, uh, you know, where we're at because we, we're always making progress. And, you know, the, the win, again, just means, uh, you know, we're headed in the right direction. Um, you know, we lost in Dallas a month ago, and um, it left a really bad taste in our mouth. Um, so uh, the good thing is there's still a lot – uh, for this program to achieve, uh, mainly winning our conference title, uh, but um, to beat such a quality opponent like that, uh, the way that we did it, um, and uh, to do it um, on this kind of stage in the Sugar Bowl uh, certainly leads me to believe that, that we're headed in the right direction. Back over on the left side. Chuck Carlton, Dallas Morning News for Charles. <coughs> Wanted to get your take when Sam stepped up and did the, you know, Longhorn Nation, we're back thing. What was your reaction when you heard that? And as a senior, what does this game and this season, what you guys accomplished, what do you think that does mean? When he said that, I was like, keep saying it. Keep saying it, man. Because that's, that's the confidence that this man exudes to the offense and to the whole team. 
Uh, and I, I've, I've commended him so many times, I'll commend him again for just being the guy he is and the way he is, man, because it's really been transcending uh, and inspiring to everybody on this whole team and this whole university. Uh, for the, as far as the win, I mean, it just like Coach Herman said, it's, 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 it's an up arrow for this, for this program, man. Uh, these guys are, are led by amazing men and amazing coaches and have a leader like uh, Sam that is going to continue to lead these guys in the offseason to, to make them not as satisfied for this, man, because this ain't the end goal for this university. Uh, obviously, like Coach Herman said, that the Big 12 championship is still something that this university needs to accomplish. And the, I know that this, this, this football team, this program is in the greatest of hands, man. Back over on the right-hand side, front row. Justin Wilson, that takes for Charles. You made a big decision in the offseason to come back, Charles, and you had an incredible year, defensive lineman of the year in the Big 12. What went into that decision to come back and, and just kind of talk about a little bit about just the feelings of winning the Sugar Bowl and, and accomplishing what you have, laying the foundation for the future of this program? A lot of that was, was being able to feel this, man. Winning this, this game with these guys, uh, with this class dog that I came in with, it, it was a big reason why, to be honest with you. I knew in the off season, what, was, what, what we were going to come in as far as freshmen and then what was already here that this team was going to be an amazing squad and um, that uh, personal dream of mine to play on the stage like this and to win a game like this was, was a huge part of why I decided to come back to school. And, um, and that's the best decision I've ever made in my 21 years of living, man, for real. Right here in the center of the room. Uh, Chip Brown with Horns 24-7. Tom, if you can talk about the, you know, the defensive performance today, just how suffocating it was. And Sam, how sore are you going to be? I mean, that the go-ahead touchdown, the game-winning touchdown drive, you carried it nine times, six in a row at the end, four getting slammed around on the goal line. Um, but your mindset down there. You want to go first? Um, I, I think that um, that that mindset and the physicality and the whatever it takes and the fourth and inches is the the mindset that our offense needs to have our team needs to have every single play um, and I'm going to do everything that I can for my team to put them in the best situation to win so I knew that I mean I thank you for giving me the ball I, I wouldn't want it any other way um, and I'm just just so proud of the way our, our defense stepped up and how the offensive line did in the run game. And then to your point about our defense, I have great game plan by Coach Orlando and our staff. Um, unbelievably well executed. Uh, we knew we had to stop the run. We had to. And um, we were committed to, um, you know, pressuring on first and second down uh, and trusting our guys on the perimeter. Uh, if if they were to pass and trusting that that pressure would also at least make the ball come out quick. And um, I, I thought the game plan uh, was well designed uh, and even more proud of, of how fiercely it was executed uh, by the players on the field. We'll stay over on the left hand side on the far end. Coach Steve Habel from Horns Illustrated. Um, defensively, the next to last drive for Georgia you just got these guys kind of rolled the dice. I mean, the blitz on that first on first down really got the ball out of his hands super fast, like you were talking about. Was that an all or nothing type situation for you guys at that point? I mean, do you feel like that was the biggest thing in the game? Which which drive? The one where we sacked him on first down. Right. Is that is that the one you're referring to? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I think, and we forced him to punt at at the end. Yeah, you know, I think we we learned our lesson on the drive before that, you know, they're so good, uh, their quarterback, receiver, O-line, that you know, if, if we sit back and um, play too passive with that much time left on the clock, that's probably not the smartest thing to do. So uh, we wanted to pressure them uh, on that drive, and, and it worked out well. And I, I just can't, you know, I think, you know, we all want to think that offense and defense are, you know, is mutually exclusive. They go hand in hand, and they're very complementary. Uh, I'm looking at this stat, the one that sticks out to me, um, which is amazing, and I know it's, it's um, an archaic stat at times, but it really mattered in this game. Uh, we had the ball for 12 minutes in the fourth quarter. 
12 of the 15 minutes. And um, I thought our offense uh, did a great job of getting first downs uh, and, and milking the clock down uh, with a lead. And our offense played a part uh, in playing great defense as well. Stay on the left-hand side in the front row. Sam, specifically about the goal line, those goal line plays, uh, were those all you? And on, was there any talk about field goal on fourth down, or was it going to be all you all the way on that? Well, um, we didn't really talk about it because <laughs> we, we got stuffed three plays in a row, which we'd have to fix. But um, I don't know what was being said on the headset, but I'm, I'm just glad that they, they trusted me. and. Um, Gave me the opportunity to punch the ball in. No. Not with that guy carrying it. Back on this side on Justin the front row. Justin Wills, inside takes for Sam. Uh, you had a little moment, Sam, with the trophy when you went over to the, to the stands and you got to see your mom and your family. Just tell us how special that was for you. Yeah, it was incredible um, to, see, to see my family and all the, all the trauma that we've been through. Um, to get this opportunity, Texas football and the University of Texas has meant so much to me and my family. And um, to be able to do this um, with my family here, uh, I'm just I can't think of anything better. We have time for two more questions. We'll go on this side of the room and then we'll finish up right here. Right. Tom, Ted Lewis, New Orleans Advocate. <clears throat> You've been part of a championship team at Ohio State. You talked about you, you went to see Georgia and I know you've got to be familiar with Alabama and Clemson. When you talk about we're getting there, what's it going to take for a Texas or anyone else right now to get to that level to dislodge what Alabama and Clemson are able to do right now? Um, they've, pro they've, they've got a pretty good head start on everybody, I can tell you that. Um, it, it's going to take um, multiple years of recruiting classes um, like they've had um, in the last half decade or so, and then it's going to take uh, the development of those great players. And, um, you know, we feel like we're on track, uh, you know, having been at this program for a couple years, we've recruited really well. Uh, we've developed really well. I think we've got uh, the best strength coach and strength program in America. Uh, and so uh, I, I think uh, we're going to need, um, you know, to continue uh, to recruit at that elite, elite level. And then once we get them here, we've, we've got to develop them at an elite level like those programs. Final question right in the center of the room. Uh, Jeff Alhorns, 24-7. Tom, uh, talk about the end of the second half or the end of the first half and the start of the second half. It was almost the complete opposite it was in the Big 12 championship game where you don't, you know, they don't score. Bushevsky gets the 50-something yard punt to, to get you to halftime, and then the defense comes out and, and forces a turnover. How huge was that swing right there, just to, to not give up points or have a special teams gaff, and then for the defense to come and, and get the, ball, uh, the, the, the offense the ball right back? Yeah, it was huge. You know, any you want to start both halves really well on both sides of the ball, all three phases of the ball, and, and you want to end both halves the same way. And, um, you know, I, I feel like uh, that sequence uh, was really important for us, um, you know, to maintain our confidence, especially there in the second half, to, to maintain our confidence that uh, we were going to be able to, to finish in the second half. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Thank and you. Congratulations. Thank you. <clears throat>